In college, I spent a semester abroad in Senegal. I went, as I think many black Americans do, in hopes of forging a connection with the continent that my ancestors had been stripped from several generations ago. What I discovered, instead, living in both the capital city, Dakar, and then in a small village in the rural southeastern region of Kidwagu, was how uniquely American I was. It can be cliché to say that soccer is the great cultural bridge, but sometimes clichés are so simply because they are true. The places where I re found the most profound sense of kinship were the pickup games on Dakar's beaches and in Kidwagu's dusty fields. In each game, players would pretend to be stars from the country's national team. Because I was there following the 2008 election, and because of my lighter complexion, whenever I scored people on the field would shout, Nice goal, Obama, at the time, the memory of Senegal's improbable run to the quarterfinals of the 2002 World Cup, the first time that they appeared in the tournament, was still fresh across the country, even six years later. Senegalese fans reveled in the fact that, in their first ever match they had defeated France, the country that had colonized them until 1959, with a historic 1-0 victory. The match is the stuff of legend, most people in the country could tell you exactly where they were when Papa Bouba Diop scored the game's lone goal. It took the Lions of Taranga 16 years to make it back to the tournament, but on Tuesday, in their opening match against Poland, they added another chapter to their fabled World Cup story. More coverage of the 2018 World Cup from the New Yorker. Poland, led by the striker Robert Lewandowski, entered the match ranked 8th in the world. They were not expected to have a difficult time with the small West African nation. But Senegal took the lead in the 30th minute, when the Senegalese midfielder Idrissa Gay's 20-yard shot deflected off the Polish defender Chiagu Chonik's shin and into the net. Somehow, this was not the most surprising moment. In the 60th minute, the Polish midfielder Jagosz Krahowiak, who was just inside the center circle, played a back pass to Jan Bednarek. Krihawiak, however, had not seen that the Senegalese forward Mbe Nyong had been let back onto the right side of the field by the referee, and was standing inconspicuously near the sideline. Bednarek had not expected the pass, and Nyong sprinted toward the ball in several long, deceptively quick strides, reaching the ball before both the Polish defender and the young Russian goalkeeper. Nyong, with a single touch of his right foot, split the two players and pushed the ball into the endless green space in front of him. With one more touch he easily pushed the ball over the goal line. Poland would manage a goal at the end of the match, but after the whistle blew, Senegalese players gathered together and danced just as they did against France 16 years ago. It was especially moving to watch Senegal win on Juneteenth, which commemorates the abolition of slavery in the United States. Gore Island, which sits off the coast of Senegal, is one of Africa's westernmost points, and is said by scholars to have been the final point of departure for millions of slaves. I remember standing in the frame of the infamous Door of No Return. I remember the smell of sea salt carried by the ocean's mist, and remember being unable to fathom what such a scent might be like when commingled with the scent of hundreds of chained bodies herded in two tight corridors. When I studied abroad, I was aware always of the distance between me and the Senegalese, no matter the shared bonds of heritage. Today's victory, on a day celebrating the freedom of slaves whose ancestors might have come from Gore, was another reminder of how this game that so many of us love can help to close that distance. And that felt like something worth holding on to.